hope you didn't miss the message in the play tonight. The greatest story ever told is the story of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. See, Jesus Christ came as a babe in a manger, but he's not in a manger any longer. He came to this earth over 2,000 years ago, born in that simple, simple manger. You've seen it maybe as you've driven down the road or maybe in a picture, a nativity scene, we call it. He came to this earth with a purpose. He did not come just to be born or just to walk around. He came, the Bible says, to save people from their sins. Jesus himself said, I am come to seek and to save that which is lost. You see, apart from Jesus, we are lost and on our way to eternity separated from God, a place the Bible calls hell. But the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and his son's name is Jesus. And Jesus came with a purpose, and that is to save lost sinners. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single person born into this world, except for Jesus, is a sinner. I'm a sinner. My parents are sinners. My wife, my kids. The Bible says, for all have sinned. Most people know that. They acknowledge that. If we're honest, yeah, we make a lot of mistakes. The Bible says that if we even commit just one sin, we're guilty of all. God is a holy God, and, and he can't allow sin into heaven. But he made a way, and that way is Jesus Christ. And he came to seek. One time Jesus tells a story about a man who had all these sheep locked up, and one was outside the fold. And in the story that Jesus told, this man went and looked for it until he found it. And Jesus was explaining that that's why he came, that if one person's not saved, that Jesus loves that person so much to go after them and show them the way of salvation. I read a story once about a young boy who lost a contact lens while playing basketball outside. He was a teenager and looked for it for a little while and came inside and told his mom, Mom, I can't find my contact. Well, she would have none of that as the story went. She went outside in just a few moments, found the contact outside and brought it back in. And a teenager like a child is apt to say, Mom, I looked really hard. How'd you find it? And she reportedly res responded, Well, son, you were looking for a piece of plastic and I was looking for $150. <laughs> See, when Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost, he deems you and me to be valuable. Not because we're worth anything, except that he has said that we are valuable. And Jesus came with a purpose to save and seek those who are lost. He came with a plan. And that was what I, the verse I read you was told to Joseph by an angel. Before Jesus was born, the angel said, He's coming to save people from their sins. But it was way before that. The Bible says that Jesus died on the cross, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. See, God always had a plan for us. The plan was that Jesus would be born. That he would live a, live a sinless life. And while he was on earth, he did many miracles to show his power. But then he died on the cross. You'll notice behind me in our center stage, there's a picture, or the, there's a cross back there. But unlike a lot of churches, there was no one on that cross. Because while Jesus did die on the cross, and he died on the cross to pay for your sin and for my sin, because he never sinned, he did not have to pay for his own sin. He could pay for someone else's sin. And because he is the Son of God, he could pay for everybody's sin. And he did die on the cross, but he didn't stay on the cross. They buried him. And three days later, he rose from the grave, showing power over sin and death and Satan. And the purpose of Jesus 
was to seek and to save. The plan was to be born, to die, and rise again. But he makes a path that someone can come to know him. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. The payment for sin. We understand what that means if we work a job. We know that as we work, we get paid. We have wages. The Bible says that the wages for our sin, the wages for your sin, the payment for your sin and for my sin is death or separation from God. Now, some people like to put different things in that verse. They like to say, well, you can pay for your sin and go to heaven if you're really good. And I hope you're really good. You ought to be good rather than bad. But the Bible doesn't say the payment for sin, the wages for sin is to be really good. It says death. Other people say, well, if you join this particular church, then you can go to heaven. You can pay for your sin. And I hope you join a good church. If you need one, I know of one. But joining a church won't pay for your sin. The Bible doesn't say for the wages of sin, the payment of sin is joining a church. And others say, well, if you get baptized, and we believe in baptism here at First Baptist Church. But again, the Bible doesn't say for the wages, the payment of sin is to be baptized. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. Like I already said, Jesus Christ died on the cross. But God commended. He showed his love toward, a, toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death, but. And I love that little word, but. Because that means the verse isn't over yet. That means that's not all there is to it. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God has a gift for you, like he had a gift for me. And that gift is eternal life, life in heaven through Jesus Christ. Boy, we definitely understand gifts around Christmas time. It is more blessed to give than to receive, but it's not too bad to receive. But just imagine, in a few days we'll celebrate Christmas and I have my three children sitting up here and got some gifts for them. Just imagine that as we wake up Christmas morning, they see the gifts and just look at them. I say, okay, let's open them, kids. Well, no, Dad, we don't want to open them. We just want to look at them. No, 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 kids. Well, let's dig into these gifts. No, Dad, we're okay just to know that you got us some gifts. Said no kid ever. <laughs> Yet many people know about Jesus Christ. And they may even know why he came. They may even know how he died on the cross and that he was buried and rose again. They've, they've heard that. They know it, but they've never received the gift. You say, well, pastor, how do you receive the gift from God? How do I get this gift of eternal life? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever means you and you and you and me. And if someone believes that Jesus Christ came to earth and lived a sinless life and died on the cross and rose again and they trust in Jesus, believe on Jesus for salvation, the Bible says they receive the gift of God. I was six years old, sitting in a Sunday school or junior church class in Pensacola, Florida, but I remember trusting Jesus Christ as my Savior. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I know that day that I prayed, and I asked Jesus to forgive me from my sin, and I trusted in Jesus Christ. And you know what happened in Pensacola, Florida to a six-year-old boy that day? He got saved. I accepted the gift of Jesus Christ. And that day, I had a home in heaven guaranteed to me. You ask, well, pastor, can children understand that? You better believe it. Can middle-aged people understand it? You better believe it. Can even the senior saints, the, senior, the seniors in this place, can they? Absolutely. The Bible says, for whosoever, for whosoever, you can even put your name there. For if J.D. calls upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. 
My friend tonight, I'm glad you're here. Hope you enjoyed the, the music and the actors and actresses. I thought they did a tremendous job. I enjoyed all of it, but I hope you don't miss the reason that Jesus came. A lot of people this season, I'm afraid, will miss it. They'll enjoy the Christmas music, they'll enjoy the lights, they'll enjoy the gift gi giving, but they'll miss the reason, and that's Jesus Christ. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you'd pray with me tonight, I'm so thankful you're here. But my friend, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I would encourage you, implore you, and beg you to trust Him tonight. I tried to explain the gospel as clearly and succinctly as I could. The fact that Jesus Christ came to earth, born of a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, that he died on the cross, he was buried and rose again, and if you ask him to save you, he will. I wonder if you're here online tonight and maybe inside your heart, inside you, something's saying, you know what? You need to trust Jesus Christ. You've never trusted him as your savior. My friends, you can do that tonight. You can do that right where you're at, whether you're here in the auditorium, whether you're at home. You can pray a simple prayer like this. It's not in the exact words with the, the heart that men believe it, but a simple prayer like this. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin, but I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, that he was buried and rose again. I ask him to save me. And I trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. I wonder tonight if you're here with your heads bowed and eyes closed. I'm the only one looking around right now. Or maybe you're at home. I wonder if you could pray that and mean that from your heart. You know that if you pray that, the Lord will hear you. Wouldn't you pray it right now? Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Tell him he'll hear you. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. Tell him. But I believe that Jesus came to earth and lived a sinless life and died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose again. You can speak right to the Lord. I trust in Jesus to forgive my sin and him alone. I wonder tonight, my friend, if you prayed that, and if you meant that. I wonder if you'd be willing to let me know. You say, Pastor, I just prayed that and I meant that. I've never asked Jesus to, to forgive me of, of, of my sins before, but I did that just now. I'd love to rejoice with you. Would you do me a favor? I'm looking around, no one else is. Would you just slip your hand up real quick and I'll see it acknowledged. I'll draw no attention to you. I'll just be glad to rejoice with you. Say, Pastor, I just prayed that and I meant that. Amen. I see that. Who else? Who else? I just prayed that and I meant that. Amen. I see that. Who else? Amen. I see that. Who else? I just prayed that. Amen. I see that. Who else? 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 Pastor, I just prayed that and I meant that. That is the greatest story ever told. And I just, I didn't raise my hand before, but I just prayed that I meant that. Who else? Billy, just a moment. Who else? I just prayed that I meant that. Lord, I thank you so much for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that you bring salvation to all men. Lord, we don't want to miss why you came to earth. Or not at Christmas time. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for those who acknowledge with an uplifted hand that they prayed and trusted you as their Savior. Lord, would you bless them? Lord, would you keep them? Lord, we sure love you. Thank you for working tonight. Thank you for all the people that are part in this. Lord, thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.